Yo 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 yo
What's up, Franz TV? How you doing? Welcome, 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 welcome. All right, let's see what's up. My name, eh? Hello? Plus World Wide Web Pixels AMA plus World Wide Web. How do you how do you guys feel about that? I need to take a piss. Massive piss. Yo, can this AMA start? Oh. oh, and there you go. The behind the scenes is already showing. <laughs> Welcome to uh, today's live stream AMA. Um, it's going to be a good one. We've got lots to share with you today. Uh, tons of questions. I know I just tweeted a couple hours ago. Like, what are your questions? Take a so we can get like a good grasp on everything that needs to be shared in today's live. And you know what? It's been so chaotic behind the scenes. I don't even think I'm talking into. Oh no, I am talking to the right mic. Here we go, guys. Building in public, sharing in public. Anyways, um, if you have any questions, throw them in the YouTube live chat. You can also comment on our tweet right on Twitter. And yeah, let's bring up Luke. Hey, everybody. Glad to be here today. Um, yeah, I've been out for the last couple of days. I actually got a surgery on Monday, so I haven't been in the Discord or anything as much, um, but I'm feeling better. Thanks for everybody who was uh, asking your concerns. Uh, but yeah, it's an exciting week this week. Um, and this AMA, I just kind of want to go over like a few things. So one, we'll get general updates. We'll kind of go into some of like the future of pixels and what we're working on, um, what you can start to expect over the next like six to 12 months. I want to start getting like a little technical and diving into uh, like some of the cool tech we've been building out. We talked about last week, a lot of the changes that we're making internally in order to better build out more gameplay, to scale the team, scale vertically and to scale horizontally. And we'll start to go into some of the nitty gritty too. I know right now is kind of a scary time for the markets and all this kind of stuff. If you're an OG in this space, you know, it's nothing to worry about. Things come and go, right? And we take like a very 
um, we like to take a very zen approach to how these things go, right? Um, when things go well, it's great. When things aren't going as well in markets, it's not really a big concern to us, right? Because we're going to continue to build out things we've been talking about building out. Um, and what we're really trying to prove here inside of Web3 Game is there's something here. Why well, it looks so red? Because he's fucking American? And, you know, we're just going to keep building and keep focusing on the stuff we've been focusing on for the last two years. And we know that we build the right things in the long run. Where do you, all where do you think Ragnick so, comes from? Yeah. Literally, um, he's a redneck. So things to address. Last week in the same <laughs> Like, literally. It's um, not even like races. It's like, like where we're at right now. They get you red. Know, we've had some really great successes and some big wins over the last, you know, six months, right? We got a token out. We, uh, you know, started the task. No, board, like all these really exciting things started to move. Now we're in a stage where gameplay is getting a little bit stale. And we know that. And we hear you guys. And we know your concerns. And some of the key things we're trying to get out have been pushing back a little bit, too. So things like Chapter 2, one of the biggest things we're working on, which will be a huge gameplay unlock, has moved back a little bit too. And we gave some transparency into like what's going on with that, what we're doing to address this kind of stuff. Some key things are, you know, we're scaling the team now, we're hiring more, we're building out more of a team to uh, address some of these areas so that we can put more resources into gameplay, we can put more resources into better user experience. Like now is finally the time to start, you know, shoving shoving more time, energy, and effort into these areas. And then the other stuff we're starting to work on too is the really cool stuff, which we think is gonna make Pixels um, one of the largest Web3 companies, not just Web3 companies, but one of the largest gaming companies um, in the long run too. The plans we have at Pixels are very ambitious. Um, I keep saying we wanna be the play to earn company and we don't just want to build a huge Web3 game. We want to build a company that can take market share away from the Web2 giants. Like what we're really aspiring to be is we're trying to build like the Web3 Zynga or the Web3 Scopely. We think that thing is a horrible blockchain technology when you find it with gaming is the biggest thing that's going to be I happening in the next five to ten years. And it's so exciting to have a community that's you know actively a part of that, that is you know building with us and here on this mission together. So short run, long run um you know it's all ups and downs until we get to that long-term vision but yeah we're still working towards it too so yeah did you have anything that you want to dive into Heidi like the housekeeping before I maybe get like into the uh depth of it we're working on a new white paper and I think I kind of want to go through some of that stuff with you guys today on what the future of like pixel distribution looks like what we're thinking about with all of that it's going to be a little bit technical um but I think it's going to be a transparency to kind of help you guys understand what we're thinking about with pixel rewards in the long run, how we want to start shifting our distribution model, how we're making decisions around pixel distribution as well too, because this is the real meat and bones of what we're building here at Pixels. And it ties into everything essentially. Um, so we'll kind of explain to you guys like what the long-term goals are, you know, the things we're building and how we think we can get there. And yeah, maybe Heidi can go over some of like the short-term stuff we've been working on too. But, like there's been some exciting stuff in the last week as well, right? Like we turned on oh, guild yeah. charts and that's been something we... Have been wanting to get out for a little bit again apologies for the delay on that one that one we probably should have got out a bit sooner we ran it through qa and we just needed to like get a bit more qa on top of it but uh yeah finally got that one out some interesting stuff there um when we released that and yeah maybe we can talk some um talk a little bit about that but yeah anything that you want to go over Heidi, before we get into some of the meat and bones yeah let's let's just dive into some of the kind of short-term community stuff that we've got going on so we have a partnership with coin gecko if you missed it um they have a candy rewards system so when you um interact with their website their their features their company you earn candies and then you can go into their candy reward system and put those towards different things so we are uh doing a giveaway with them for 15 gecko themed pixel pets they're so cute so there's five different types. So there'll be three of each type. Um, so go check that out. It's running until I think Sunday or Monday. So get in that while you can. Um, oh, my dad is calling me. Today is just chaotic. This, You know, that's the vibe of today. Anyways, okay. Uh, I wanted to tell you all about the Twitter space we're doing next week. So you guys probably know already that we do um, X twitter spaces every tuesday at 11 a.m pacific and next week we're going to do some one that's kind of different kind of cool it is web3 games and streamers and a lot of our really great streamers out there are actually spanish speaking so this uh twitter space next week is going to be kind of 50 50 english and spanish so if you don't speak english you already have no idea what i'm talking about but 
um, en el próximo semana nuestro um, Twitter Space va, va a estar en español y inglés. And I did not prepare that at all. So if that was terrible Spanish, be nice to me. But anyways, so I will not be speaking much Spanish on this because as you can tell, I can't speak very much. But yeah, very, very excited to be a little bit inclusive of our LATAM community. Okay, inclusive. on Friday, we have inclusive. an party hosted by Kind. I think it is at 7 a.m. Pacific. By the way, all of these times, I know I'm constantly saying them in my time zone, hop over to our Discord, look at our in-game calendar. All of them are there in your localized time. So it's a lot easier to figure out <laughs> what time works for you. Um, Kydro Spark Suits launched yesterday, which is super exciting. And we will be having an energy party with Kydro in two weeks, I think. So there's the tea. Um, let's see what else is there. Oh, I started an Instagram account, um, which is pretty fun. So it's a public Instagram account. I'm kind of talking a lot about pixels and myself a little bit there because I really like this. Like I really like being able to interact with you guys on a more casual level consistently. I love the stories feature of Instagram, which is why I'm choosing to use that platform. I'm still going to be active on Twitter. I'm still coming to these AMAs, Discord. Nothing on that front is changing, but I do have an Instagram account. And I, yeah, I feel like it's a lot easier to interact with you guys one-on-one -on -one over there. So the handle is it's Lemonhead um, because my name in game is Lemonhead. So anyways, I'll see you over there. And then, yeah, we've got shard selling launched yesterday, which was pretty fun um, to see how that all turned out. Um, it, was, it was cool. And then, yeah, we've got tons of gameplay changes and everything that Luke was talking about. So, Luke, you can take it from here. All right, sweet. Yeah, I get, I'm getting a lot of comments on um, <laughs> why it looks like, So I just had a major surgery on Monday. Give me some... Uh, <laughs> Give me some grace here, guys. Okay, but someone um, else was like, oh, no, like, Luke, be more careful. Don't die. Guys, it was an ACL surgery. It was nothing. <laughs> yeah, He's <yeah>. fine. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm doing all right. Thanks for everybody asking. Make sure to be concerned for me being really red. Um, yeah, I'll probably nap after this AMA. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I'm doing all right. So, yeah, when it comes to, like, the nitty-gritty of what we're working on, um, again, so – we were going through some scaling issues. We're expanding team. We're working on getting gameplay better. Right now, gameplay is not exactly where we want it to be. Um, and chapter two is delayed a little bit, right? So again, we're trying to address those holes. We don't want to give that date on chapter two because we've set the date a couple times and we've missed it. Um, but it's looking a lot better than it was two weeks ago is what I can say. And I don't think it's too far off. So once we have the exact date, we'll you know basically let everybody know when that exact date is. We want to get it out as quick as possible because we think it changes the gameplay in an interesting enough way where it's going to be worth getting it out sooner rather than later, even though it will be a massive change too. So again, when we release chapter two, it's going to be interesting, right? Because what we're probably going to do is we're going to release it a bit earlier than maybe a normal game studio would. So what you'll have to trust from us is that when we release chapter two, we'll update it we'll fix it and we'll get it in a better spot very quickly. Um, if you've followed us for a long time, you know that's how we release things typically and it works, but just give us a little bit of grace and patience when we release it. So when chapter two comes out, um, yeah, it'll come out with a bunch of stuff. It'll come out with changes to farming. So the way that you guys farm will be completely different. Again, soils have become single use, especially on the NFT land, which will be a lot different. The reward structure on basically everything you do with a task where we change to, There'll be hundreds of new tasks in the task board that you'll have to basically fight for in different ways than you did before. Basically, most of the resources are changing to act a lot more like trees. And it's going to be almost like PvP for resources in a way. So that's why guilds are so important and a really big aspect of chapter two. And you know, guilds, that's an interesting one that released on um like Tuesday, right? Yesterday. And we're already seeing some of the interesting effects from that, right? So now that we have some of the stuff with guild shards selling out, you're starting to see that the governance or the structure of a guild is actually really important, right? Who you join when it comes to joining a guild will actually really affect your chapter two experience when you're thinking about like the higher tier resources. And if you're a player who wants to get like a bit further through pixels and wants to probably earn more pixels, you're probably going to want to join a guild for this reason, because how this is going to work is a lot of the best resources inside of the game are going to be on the NFT lands, right? And these NFT resources, um, there'll be different tiers of resources, right? You'll have to either upgrade your spec 
or join a guild and get access to a guild land or find some public land to farm on. Um, that will get you access to the tasks that will turn in for more pixel, essentially, right? So there's some interesting gameplay with that too. Um, so we're trying to get this out as quick as possible. I think it's probably like two to three weeks out still, if I'm estimating. Um, and yeah, it's in a lot better spot than it was two weeks ago. So it's feeling a lot better. Now, we talked a little bit about the long term. Oh, and I think here, this this should play into some of it too. Um, somebody asked a lot about the reputation, the VIP stuff. So right now we've been doing a lot of restrictions on accounts and there have been some false positives. I think we should just address that right now. So we talked a lot about what our prevention strategies are for bots and for you know bad actors inside of the game and ecosystem a lot, right? And right now our strategy is kind of, because we have so many free to play rewards, we do a lot of data analysis on the back end of users. Now we haven't added the pool changes yet, but pretty soon we're about to start to shift a lot of the earnings behind VIP and eventually also behind guild lands initially as well too, where the resources are gonna be a bit more silo resistant when we do that. So then we can actually change up our strategy to account restriction and account banning a little bit too. Um, again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to change the economics of botting, multi-accounts, and bad actors inside the ecosystem. When we have chapter two out, it'll be a whole different strategy when we come to uh, like bot prevention detection and this account restriction. This isn't exactly the strategy that we want to do in the long term. It's not very Web3 of us. We understand that. Um, but also, it's been pretty effective so far when it comes to like getting more pixel to real users. Um, and we're going to keep doing that too. So if you have been falsely banned, um, put in an appeal. We'll take a look at it by hand. Um, and we're normally pretty good at getting real accounts back to real users. Um, it just gives us like a bit more time to actually like look into the account specifically and to look into, um, you know, who actually is a real player or not. So again, um, this is not us trying to like remove real users from the game or ecosystem. Like our only intention behind this is we want to give out more rewards to the best players. Um, so what that means is we have to get rid of some of the bots through this strategy as well. So that's a bit about that. Now here we have like a, we'll see how this goes. I'm going to pull up this draft white paper that we have. Um, and this is some interesting stuff when it comes to the uh, like future of pixels. So we're building out a lot of really interesting new tech. Um, and a lot of the tech that we're building out over the next year involves how we distribute pixel and what the end goal of Pixel is essentially. So we have a strong belief that play to earn can work. And it actually is not so easy to actually execute. Um, we have a bunch of things that we're measuring. And a lot of what we're trying to do at Pixels is we're trying to get more data driven when it comes to how we actually create incentive structures and how we give out rewards to our users. So if we have one thing that we're trying to work on essentially, or like one thing that we're trying to solve, I keep saying this a lot, but it's efficient reward distribution. And when I say efficient, I'm talking about like economics efficiency. So that means we want to basically be giving out as much pixel as possible to the users who are enjoying the game most. So there's a few things that we're thinking about when we think about pixel distribution. And, you know, we have like the bullet points here. If somebody wants to just like take screenshots, they can look into this. Um, but yeah, the key thing is there's a different strategy in growing Web 2 games versus Web 3 games. So in Web 2, how Web 2 games grow is they do performance marketing. They like to do user segmentation. So basically, they'll go on the top level. They'll talk to like a bunch of people who they think might play the game. Like we've said this example a lot, but like they'll be like, I want to target 40 year old moms in Indonesia. They'll run an ad in Indonesia. And then they'll basically do a bunch of measuring all the way until when somebody actually spends money inside of a game, right? Because that's the, uh, that's the metric that they're optimizing for. So really these Web2 games, they're playing a game, the game makers, they're playing their own game, right? They're trying to build a game in order to get people to spend more money inside of the game, which is a kind of funny way to do it, right? But then Web3, it kind of changes things, right? We actually have a token. And the cool thing about the token is, you know, all of our users also have this token too, and it creates really interesting aligned incentives that way. Um, and the cool thing about how we've set up our tokenomics is we essentially get tokens to distribute back to our users every single month. So we're all kind of in this together, right? And instead of running ads, instead of running performance marketing, 
what instead we want to do is we want to actually create um, reward systems and tiers that help users you know, actually get Pixel inside of the game. And in the long run, what we actually need to be doing is we want to be having people use Pixel as much as people are getting Pixel in the long run, if that makes sense. So now I know some people are hearing this and you know, there's different types of people inside of the ecosystem, right? So not everybody needs to be a spender inside of Pixels. And a lot of what we think about is what are the right ratios of users inside of our game and ecosystem that will lead to optimal ecosystem growth. And what that means is there's probably a certain percentage of users that will never pay any pixel inside of the ecosystem. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, you actually probably need that. So a lot of what we're thinking about is how can we identify the right types of users in order to create an ecosystem where some people want to be spending inside of the game, then some people, they just want to come in to help support the ecosystem by playing, using their time, energy, and grinding, that's also an option for them as well too. So a lot of the stuff we're building is essentially this like really crazy data-driven pipeline of basically identifying users through different data that we have in people. So it's things like um, the game-specific data that we grab on people. It's things like the demographic data, the blockchain data, um, the ecosystem data that we have. So things like when you connect social accounts, you know, if you've played other games, if you've worked with a partner of ours, um, we can basically get all of this data on our users and then figure out, you know, what kind of user you are. And then the whole idea is we essentially want to create like one ID for you where we kind of get a good idea and sense of like who these users are. And we want to basically label and segment our users to identify who might be the best users inside of the game and ecosystem in order for us to give incentives to. And there's a couple of different things that we think about when we think about this, right? We think about um, like the different types of users, we think about the different personas, and we think about like who might also be a spender as well too, because truth is in a sustainable Web3 ecosystem, you also need net spenders in this uh, ecosystem as well too. But uh, essentially what we want to be doing is like a bunch of data analysis on all these users, a bunch of tracking, segmenting, all of this kind of stuff. So we can basically figure out who the best users are inside of the ecosystem so that we can actually give out the best rewards. So there's a lot of cool stuff there. Um, but if we can actually build this out in the right way, then what that means is we can actually even start giving out dynamic rewards and incentives. So the idea is we kind of want to figure out how to get this on autopilot in the long run. Um, in the very beginning, what we're probably going to be doing is it's probably going to be a bit of like data analysis and then creating rewards, seeing how they work. Um, but really the whole um, intention behind this is essentially like figuring out if we can use these rewards in a better way to boost the KPIs. So one that would be net pixel spend inside of the ecosystem. The other things would be like, you know, DAU retention, all of this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, we're thinking a lot about like what are the different incentive structures? Like what are different earning styles inside of the game that we can do to, you know, help people get through the next stages of the game, progress, all of this kind of stuff. And then a lot of what we're doing too is um, like a lot of the attribution of these rewards as well. Um, so yeah, tons of stuff here. We'll probably release this white paper um, like actually publicly as well. I mean, you're already kind of seeing like the early stages and drafts of this, um, but yeah, it's exciting stuff. And then when it comes to actually metrics and what we're doing too, we shared this mix panel last week as well, but we have like a mix panel that some people see, right? Um, and you can actually see the metrics of spend inside of the game here and how we're actually doing on all these metrics as well. So if you don't know what this dashboard is, we can also share it again publicly. It's like, this is a dashboard that's like somewhat public. It's like our partners have it. A lot of people inside the ecosystem have it, um, but yeah, not everybody has it. Um, but we're also not afraid to share it. But yeah, the pixel spend inside the ecosystem right now actually has been quite healthy. Um, just in the last 30 days, there's been 5.74 million pixels spent inside the ecosystem. Um, a lot more VIP purchases in the last um, a little bit as well too, but it's actually quite healthy. Um, so exciting stuff here. Um, you know, there's already 200,000 active VIP members, 100,000 daily active VIPs. Our retention is doing pretty well. Like in terms of KPIs, we're not doing bad right now, but basically the next six months, what a lot of what we're trying to work on 
is basically optimizing these metrics and getting really data-driven about this. And if we actually pull all of this off, this is where the real long-term value and the ecosystem success happens. So, you know, if you can bear with us for the next like three months while we get chapter two out, while we start to build some of this stuff, um, this is the stuff that nerds me out and excites me so much about what Pixels is up to because these numbers are what matter at the end of the day. Um, you know, tweets, protests, all this stuff. We like this too. The sentiment is really important. Um, but when we're trying to build a sustainable ecosystem, this is the stuff that we're looking at every single day, basically. These DAU numbers, um, the bottling statistics, um, all of this kind of stuff. So spend and that ecosystem spend, you know, that is core to all of this, right? We got to build a game that people actually want to be using the pixel token in. Um, without a game that people want to be using the pixel token in, none of this matters, none of this works. And it's all kind of it's all kind of useless, right? So chapter two, again, we're really excited to get this out because we introduced new ways to use the pixel token inside of chapter two. And it's exciting for that reason. Um, you know, we'll actually give you reasons to be using the token inside of the game if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine. We'll try to convince you to use it. And that's kind of a lot of the work that we'll be doing. Like if we create incentive structures inside of the game where um, you just start to fall in love with the game. Maybe, maybe you came into Pixels because you wanted to earn, but you're like, oh, I'm actually having a really good time and I actually want to start using some of the Pixels I've been earning inside of the game um, to help me go through the game, progress through it. And that's the fun stuff. So then when all this stuff gets really interesting is when we start to build out other games. So we talk a lot about the two different strategies inside of Pixels. One is vertical scale. So when we talk about vertical scale, it's basically scaling out this, all of our KPIs, and all of our metrics when it comes to just this one Pixels game that we have out now. But the team is already starting to plant the seeds of releasing more games as well, too. So the interesting thing is, you know, we have a goal of net ecosystem spend. And like, you know, I think a good goal for that would be about 12 months. When we start having more people using the Pixel token that we're distributing every single month. But that doesn't necessarily even mean that we just need to do it through this one game alone. Um, if we start to build out other games, do you think did that, it. you know, incentivizing I fucking did to download it. the games? Um, for a little bit of pixel. And that also leads to like some interesting other effects there too. That's the whole goal too. So the idea is build out this tech. No one else is building this because they don't have a live web three game. Um, I think like Axie Infinity and that team is building out some stuff like this too. But we have such a crazy first mover advantage from being in the space so early and being out here now where we can basically get a huge head start on building out all of this really crazy cool tech when it comes to play to earn technology. And if we can actually nail this and figure this out and then scale this to other games too, What's that's next? when things start to get really, really interesting. So that's kind of the master plan at Pixels, essentially. Get really data-driven, start to think about how- we I don't make think I'll be able to make this one. And for play there in the work, you got to get really in depth with these numbers. So you know your experience as a player is a little bit different sometimes than what we're thinking about too. But again, player experience is the core to all of this. If we don't have a game that people want to be playing, if we don't have fun games, if we don't have games that- you know, you really get a lot of enjoyment out of, we're failing in all of those missions. So um, again, chapter two, we realize how crucial it is. We're getting it out as quick as possible. And we'll start to build out even more types of fun gameplay as well too. And then expect some other interesting oh, stuff dead. coming out in the next like two to three months too. I think uh, I don't know how my Gio right alluded to some stuff. I'm about to like meet with him after this AMA where we'll talk about like what's more collabs like Pixels and Axie look like. What's a collab with um, Pixels and Ragnarok look like? We also want to start really experimenting with um, like other models as well, too. There's some really interesting cross ecosystem stuff that we can start exploring as well. Um, like, for example, Axie Infinity just released their bounty program. I love that. Um, what if there's something where it's like, OK, if we've linked, um, if we've linked Axie's bounty program inside of Pixels and we're you know sending Pixels players to like these other areas inside of the game, is there some kind of rev share model that we can do there? And then can we also, if we're getting revenue from some of those things, you know, distribute that back to the players too. So maybe we're actually collecting some AXS. And then now we start introducing AXS rewards inside of Pixels because we have a revenue stream of that. There's some cool stuff that we'll be experimenting with too. Admit I'm it, you so need me. I'm so bullish on the road the ecosystem. Admit it. What the future of that looks like too. There's so much to dig into with play to earn tech, all of this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I hope that made some sense to you guys. We'll start talking about this more and more because this is the stuff that I'm most interested in building out. Um, and I think this is how you actually, you know, really make play to earn work when you start to get really into the data, the depth and all of this kind of stuff. So it's interesting because like when you're 
building in public, this isn't always the stuff that you share, right? Like we share some of the game stuff too, but I think it's cool to get an insight into like some of this harder stuff that we're building out too, because it gives you guys a bit of background knowledge on um, like what our goals are, like the things that we're trying to work on too. And I think from my understanding of our users, I think you all want to see play to earn work too, right? Like I think, I think we all really believe in this vision in the long run. And I think the people that play Pixels and Axie and are in the Ronin ecosystem, I think part of the appeal, right, is like you're a part of this really new early tech and you get to be a part of like basically the future of gaming because this is something that is new now. But in five to 10 years, I think most games are going to be play to earn in some aspect. Um, and it's cool that we get to be on the forefront of this, right? So I know, again, markets do whatever markets do. It doesn't really matter to us because we believe so full-heartedly in the future of this. And um, we're really excited to build this out and get on to the next stages of this too. So yeah, if you guys have any questions on this, I'm like more than happy to dig into that or we can get back into the game stuff too. Um, but yeah. yeah. Well said. Well said. Okay. So we've got a lot of good questions. I also tweeted earlier today asking for some questions. Um, and there were some good ones there. So I know we talk about this a lot, but will we have KYC in the future? Do you want to just quickly touch on thoughts on that? Yeah. So the whole idea is if we actually get this user segmentation and this tech down, we won't need the KYC from a um, like economics perspective. Now, there might be regulation at some point. I know that the US is thinking about regulating Web3 gaming a bit more than they have, um, where who knows what that's going to look like. But our preference is to not require hard KYC in order to play the game because it doesn't work um, if you think about the economics of it, right? When it comes to user acquisition and all of this side of things too. Um, Free-to-play games, they are so dialed in on the incentive structures inside of free-to-play games when it comes to ad spend, where the friction of making somebody KYC to play a game would make no free-to-play game work right? Um, because it's just such a huge barrier. So we want to actually make, if we want to make Web3 gaming competitive against Web2 gaming, we want to make the barriers just as low to enter too. But then what that means is we actually need to be very, very smart about how we distribute pixel tokens to our users. So you're already going to start to see some of the changes soon. Um, we've talked a little bit about splitting up the pools between free to play and VIP um, and landowners, and that's coming soon. I think either it's probably going to be next week at this point. Um, but the dev team's working on that. That should be coming out pretty soon. That's going to be one of the first steps that we get to this user segmentation. We'll basically have like two to three user segments to start where there'll be separate pools where essentially- Who the fuck is crypto? The IPs will start to get a lot more Who's... pixel than they do now once we have this out. No um, offense. And already that's going to be a pretty good barrier too. But then once we start to get some of this other data, and once you start to get better ideas of like who our users are, we can get a bit more nuanced with it too. We can basically create pools for like pet owners, for um, like people who skill up more. Like that's the kind of stuff that we're looking at as well. And we'll start to shift more and more of the rewards to this as well too. So essentially as we get this smarter and smarter, we'll get a better idea of like who the real users are and who the uh, you know users are who are better for the ecosystem too. So it's not just... Um, it's not just going to be real user versus bot that we care about in the long run, right? Um, there's different types of users who are beneficial to the game, even if they're not spenders as well too, right? Like really what we want is we want to be giving out pixel to people who love the game and who want to get further through the game. He like, used that's to stream often. Thing. So truthfully, that probably huh. means that if you don't like pixels and you're just playing no to clue. earn and you don't enjoy it at all, um, it might get a little bit more difficult in that regard, but if you like the game and you're progressing further and you're actually having a fun time playing it, like that's like, I'm not even trying to be like, I'm just like, and that's Who? the intention of this tech that we're building out. So we're hiring for this team now. Um, we'll actually probably post job openings on the pixels, Twitter, probably early this, probably either later this week or early Who? next week. We'll have like official job positions on the pixels, Twitter. We're already like hiring on the back end for this a little bit and like, digging into network and stuff too, but we'll start posting some of this publicly as well. This is the most important stuff that we're building out. For sure. Okay. Um, someone was asking about renting land features or pet, uh, renting land or pet features in game instead of using a third party platform. Is that something that we may build in the future? 
Yeah, so truthfully, this is what I like about blockchain stuff where there's sometimes stuff that we don't have to build. So we probably won't add in land renting ourselves to be completely honest or pet rentals. Like that's 80% solved with like people like Loot Rush and things like that too. And if you haven't checked out Loot Rush, you should check it out because they're actually doing some pretty interesting stuff there. I know that people are like renting out pets and I think they're making like, couple bucks a day just renting out a pet which is kind of cool right and i think it's oh, even really plan um so check out some of those partners i think do we still have ran ft re nft how do you say that <laughs> support Ren i don't know actually i was gonna ask i'm not sure um but yeah it's some pretty cool stuff out there um Okay. And then another good question I got on Twitter was ads in Terravilla. I know we, we've talked about this a few times. It's, it's quite interesting. I think that's something that we could definitely do in the future. Um, yeah. I, I, had a I have a couple conversations on that this week and next week, actually. So there's a few interesting things with that. I think, honestly, somebody just hit me with a proposal. Um, I think you know them on that's Twitter. Amazing. What's this? here? Let me pull up this DM. Um, going to dock in. them. No, no. I mean, I think he's he's been, he's been posting about it a lot, actually. Quinn, um, Quinn two nine nine two on Twitter. Um, yeah, he has some proposal for um, ads on top of land, actually, which I think would be really interesting um, because yeah, landowners actually get a lot of visibility into um, like a lot of impressions on their land too. So I think that actually might be the easiest first one to implement um, because yeah, he actually has like a pretty solid protocol already for us um, and that's the kind of stuff that we love experimenting with like if you have something that you think would work inside of pixels one we're going to start funding some of that in the future like near future so some of the community built tools we're really appreciative of it of them and they make the pixels experience better we'll start setting aside some ecosystem rewards for the builders inside of our community for this reason and then yeah some of this other stuff too is really interesting too so somebody's come up to us with like potential ad protocols. Um, yeah, there's another company we've been talking to, Hype Labs too, that are working on finding placements that might work inside of Pixels as well. Um, yeah, what's interesting is like we have a large player base, right? And that's actually quite valuable to other people too. So that's other potential use for the Pixel token. I We even talked to uh, like Sky Mavis about something like this too, um, for like the Axie Bounty program, which is interesting as well. Can you see me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did it cut out? I don't know what was going on there. You're good. You're good. Okay. Okay. Well then, um, on to the next. I don't know what you finished up there, but uh, okay. Let's dive into some questions that we got on on YouTube itself or or Twitter, of course. Um, I wanted to pull up specifically. Where did I put it? I forget. Okay. Well, let's just talk about it. Um, people asking for a windmill in. Terravilla. So windmills are NFT traits on farmlands. So we didn't want to just go ahead and add one without discussing this first with landowners. And there's a lot of different ways we could go about this. And we've settled on um, kind of putting like a simplified windmill into Terravilla. And then the landowners have voted on that over the last couple of days. I believe the vote was to yes put one in it will be simplified so it will only there will only be no bulk crafting and i think only a handful of things will be craftable um so yeah that is most likely coming i will double check the the polls but i believe uh they voted in favor of putting one in terra villa so that should be coming um soon ish yeah oh, oh here it is there's the ghost. Oh, wait. Okay, go ahead. So um going down, save the game before it's too late. Um, yeah, so actually our DAU numbers have not gone down. So there was an issue with our um tracking service on DAP radar for like a day or two. Um it went down and we got it back up, but our DAU has actually remained constant. Um so we actually haven't seen a drop in players yet. Um, and it looks like real DAU is still going up too. If you cross-reference that with traffic data that we have with other stuff too, like our DAU numbers are actually still pretty solid and increasing. Um, like just yesterday, we had 728,000 unique users on, on the game client and about like, yeah, something like that in the game as well. Damn. 
Amazing. Um, oh, okay. I pinned this one because I thought it was funny. Please remove Shore Lemon Heartbeat. Um, purely because of the whole riot that's been taking place on Twitter. It's been quite funny. But yeah, so when it comes to this, obviously, internally, we've been having discussions about this too. And we will push for um, this as well. In the future, when we have these short-term release, um, I don't know, craftable items or seeds or crops, like anything that's like a short-term thing, we will implement maybe, I don't know, the following three weeks, two weeks or something afterwards, those tasks are in place and then they kind of phase out slowly. Thus far, we know it has not really worked that way. Um, as we say all the time, we are constantly tweaking and and rebalancing and, and seeing what's working. So it's all work in progress. Like Jumbara heads, for instance, we're getting a little out of control. And I believe last, I think it was on Friday or something, we implemented a bit of a change there. So we're working on it. And yeah, I thoroughly enjoy the riots that have been taking place on Twitter. Um, okay. What other <laughs> did Luke buy a goat with Ronan? You I'm like working on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So some background on me actually. Um, I like lived in Kenya for like six months. Um, I haven't really talked about some of that stuff, but like I, I full-time traveled for almost two years before I started Pixels. And I had like a very non-conventional way to start Pixels. I started Pixels when I was living on a sailboat. I literally was in the middle of the ocean, like sailing from New Zealand to Fiji um and like coding in the aft cabin for like months and months and then eventually i found my way to kenya and i just lived in the middle of the bush in kenya um it was the weirdest thing i basically just like emailed this village and we worked out this agreement where i could um like basically live there i paid them like a thousand dollars a month it was a win-win scenario for both of us and um i got to like live in the bush in kenya for like two months um and i was in kenya like in other places for like four months, but I have such a love for Kenya for that reason. Um, and when I was living in Kenya, um, some crazy stuff happened, but I got given a goat and it was the nicest thing ever. Honestly, I just like made friends with the guy there. He was like very insistent that he gave me a goat. And yeah, I saw something on Twitter the other day about like somebody in Kenya who was purchasing chickens with Ron. Ron. Um, and yeah, I just asked about a goat. So we're trying to make it happen. Um, we're going to see if we can purchase the first goat in the Ronin token. And then, yeah, we'll work on, you know, where that goat goes. Um, but yeah, we'll probably just give it away to somebody there. <laughs> okay. All right, back to it. Uh, let's see here. Now that landowners are botting to benefit themselves, are you planning on banning them too? Oof. Yeah. So, I mean, if you do know a landowner that is abusing the system, then report them and we'll take a look into it. But what I will say is when we release chapter two, it actually will make botting on land useless. Um, essentially, like it, it won't be the same anymore because soils will be single use. Essentially, yeah, it'll be like 100x less beneficial to a user if they're botting on their land, right? So chapter two, these changes are really necessary to come out as quick as we can get them out. Um, but yeah, it should change a lot there. So we're working on it. We're trying to get it out as quick as we can. Um, chapter two will change a lot of the gameplay. So yeah, we're excited to see like how it messes things up. Um, cause it's going to really affect how you guys play the game and it'll take some time to get used to also. So if you're an avid pixels player or a content creator too, what we might actually want to do is prep you guys a little bit on what the changes actually will look like. We'll probably get you in some of the test environments early because it's going to change everything that you do about the game, it's going to have like total new strategy to how you play the game as well, where things will be a lot different. Um, again, we went so much into the data and analytics side and we talk about chapter two in the gameplay a lot too. So if you're not following every AMA, then it's understandable why you're like, why are they talking about DAU? We don't care about DAU, we just care about the game. Um, but yeah, we want to mix things up in the AMAs a lot of the time too. So like, we'll probably start talking more about chapter two again next week, go into what exactly it looks like, what you can expect, because we have a bunch of stuff there that's ready now. We can start to demo it again. Um, basically the changes coming are, there's going to be a lot of new industries. There's gonna be different tiers of industries too. Um, I think we're thinking about like four to five different categories to start. It'll be new types of trees new types of soils, new types of crops. Um, there'll be new skills, wood, 
stone crafting and metal crafting too. And all these things will tie in together as well. It's going to feel a little bit more like an MMO where you have to like get different resources, combine them together into different tools where you can actually get these tools onto the land. Um, you'll have to like get new industries, things like this as well too. Um, but yeah, it'll change how resources are gathered and your gameplay will change a lot too with that. So there'll be a lot of balance that we need to do when we get this out and it'll be a little messy, but it's going to be fun too. Cause it's just going to be, it's going to be interesting, right? Um, the pixel earnings are going to change up completely when we do this. And the people who are most savvy and on top of this new meta will probably earn a lot more than others. Um, so that's an exciting thing to think about too, when we have this out, if you stay up to date with the AMAs, if you stay up to date with the gameplay changes that we're making, you'll have a head start on all the alpha that you need when it comes to actually, um, like the next stages of pixels too. And then if you join a good guild, that'll be important too. Um, we can talk a little bit about guilds too. Um, I saw somebody that was a little upset about one of the guilds, right? I don't know, probably. Mm -hmm. um here we're getting a lot of questions about the mass banning what i'll say is i think we'll ease up on it a little bit um yeah it's a little bit more aggressive than we want to right now so we'll talk to the community team and we'll basically figure out what this is if you've been banned please put in an appeal and we'll get to it we'll look at it by hand and we'll go and basically do some like mass unbans too um again apologies for this we're like trying to tweak everything right um, and until we have chapter two out, this is probably the best approach for the short term, um, but something we want to move away from in the long term. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to whip through a few questions. Okay, when uh, carnival tickets, I lost the message, of course. So yeah, that was something we ran at the end of last year. We might open it up again in, in the future. I won't dive into it too much right now because I know we talk about it almost every AMA. But right now, you cannot redeem your tickets, uh, but we might open up something in the future. We'll, we'll definitely let you know when we do that. Uh, any Lemonhead Alpha on Instagram? Yeah, so I start. I pinned it on the chat if you want. I started a new Instagram so that I can kind of connect with you guys deeper. The reason I actually wanted to pull this up, though, was because I do a ton of Q&A on my Instagram stories. So if there's a question you've been wanting to ask and maybe we haven't been seeing it on and answering it on the AMA, you can ask it directly to me on there and I'll... Guys, don't let this flop. Don't let this flop. Don't let this flop. Don't let this flop. Don't let it flop. Free Kagi, free Kagi, free Kagi in comments, free Kagi. So unimpressed with me. And be like, she literally doesn't know how to play games because I generally, <laughs> I don't play stuff like this. So it'll just be so embarrassing, but also I don't get embarrassed very easily. I don't know, we'll see, let me know. Um. And then update to mini lands. What will they look like? So specs, yeah. Upgradable specs will come in chapter two. We've talked about it on previous AMAs. Uh, as Luke said, we might dive a little bit deeper into um, chapter two in the next AMAs. But if you want to go look right now, I would say go watch some of our previous AMAs or just ask around. I'm sure there's tons of screenshots of the stuff that we've leaked. I think even in our release video of the Pixel token, if you go to our YouTube um like profile account uh the first video there shows a little tidbit of um what they'll look like so you can go look there when find luke coding in the bush quest <laughs> that's, Love that. that's some oh, pixel four right there <laughs> yeah here here's an example of like what one of the new specs looks like they're a little bit oh, bigger there you go. perfect that's a big one, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the largest one to be able to upgrade on. Um, let me see if I can find another. I hope this link works. <laughs> nope. You just got to change um, M to L or L to M. Yeah, I, I did S. Um, I think it's just share. Oh, right, though. just yeah, just take it out. Yeah, and this will be the new spec that comes into. Yeah, so this will this will be a change to the specs too. So every spec moving forward too, it's gonna have some trees. Again, there's new soils coming in, right? Um, every hey, spec. I predicted the change. trees, didn't that. I? This is this early stages, guys. Um, but yeah, yeah lower low tiered trees, uh, so plots of soil, all of that. So yeah, 
Good little leak there. Okay. You pinned a bunch of stuff. Do you want to go through a few of these? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is a there's a lot. Um, I like this one. Kiro, like I I want a gecko. Okay, well, go go to uh, Candy Rewards on Coin Gecko site. PK mode to kill bots. PK mode to kill bots. I suggest. So there's one thing I want to get in. I'll, I'll ask the dev team again to see if we can do it. I would love an item where if you click on somebody, it teleports them back to Terra Villa. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's like it's almost PK, right? Um, yeah, that might be something we could sell in Pixel, right? Um, like maybe like one Pixel gets you like ten teleport buttons that send somebody back to Terra Villa. It would mess with people a lot. Um, a good troll thing too. <laughs> um, long distance cutting slash clicking is a big problem. How to solve it? Get a pet. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh the speed trait um you want high speed trait to have bar interaction radius i actually i didn't know that and someone asked me and i was like no and then i looked into it it was embarrassing but yeah shout out to chuck who called me out on that one yeah so one new thing that's going to be happening in the task board in chapter two is there's going to be more dynamic tasks. So the more that you level up, actually, you're going to get different tasks inside of your task board as well. So that's something to note too. Um, so that's exciting when that's coming out. So chapter two will bring some of that kind of stuff. How do you plan to address the problem of glitch exploiters using wall hacks to steal wood? At least add a blacklist to land options and let us ban them ourselves. So yeah, that's going to be a lot of the... Uh, guild permissioning features that come with chapter two. So if you look into guilds right now, let me see if I can pull this up actually. If you look into guilds right now, um, I'm fucking let me pull this up. You know, I think the coin gecko candy is sold out or whatever terminology you would use. <laughs> They're gone. Fully redeemed. They're fully redeemed. Damn, you guys. That was like, how, how many days was that? That was so fast. Well, good luck to everyone that entered. Very excited. I Hold up. I'm activating my guild right now. Because <laughs> um, I want to show people what this looks like. So I guess you can go degen into my guild if you want now. Um, but yeah, you can... <laughs> yeah, yeah, so in the guild dashboard, if you're a guild owner, um, right, like there's a white list of users, right? Um, and if you can see, there's actually different roles inside of guilds. So here, one thing I can do is undo my white list. Um, and maybe I can just go into a different guild to show you guys this. But essentially, there's different types of roles you're going to start to be able to give people in guilds and yeah if you see right now there's just two different roles there's owner and there's supporter but eventually there's going to be more types of roles that you're going to be able to give to people inside of the guild dashboard and these will be how you basically allow access of resources to guild members so if you don't want to give somebody access to your guild resources um, you don't have to give it to them, even if they have a guild shard. And that's going to be one of the changes too. And we'll start to have you be able to fine tune that as well. It'll probably just be some really basic stuff at first. But essentially what the guild does is it acts like a whitelist to the guild resources. So, you know, if people hack through the walls, they won't actually be able to get the resources once we have this part out. All right. Uh, let's see some other questions in here. Um, gone through a lot today. It's been good. It's been really good. Oh, someone's asking about why can't, why I can't use my friend's spec if we're in the same guild. So you should be able to use your friend's spec, uh, regardless of being in guild or not being in their guild or not. And that will be true in chapter two as well. Um, so I'd say go try and do it again um, and let me know. <laughs> um, 
What if the plots in the carnival is exclusive to only VIP? That's interesting. I don't hate that. Um, yeah, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, and maybe maybe carnival is only available to VIP too. So one of the issues with the carnival before it was it was kind of botted. Um, but if maybe we leave it only available to VIP, then we can do that kind of stuff too. Yeah, we were talking about that when left right was kind of getting out of control. We were talking about gating the map to only VIP users, so that could be it could be interesting. Um, yeah, public plots of soil are, are definitely going to be an interesting thing come chapter two, also. So we'll definitely have a discussion about that. Um, okay, what happened to Jambara head tasks? Oh, sorry. Did we just click on it? <laughs> um, it's so funny hearing people complain. And I'm not saying maybe you're complaining about them going away, but uh, it, it, you can never, we can never do the right thing, it seems. But anyways, there were too many. It was out of control. So we implemented some changes. Um, actually make the task board smarter is what we did. And that uh, implemented cooldowns for certain types of tasks. And um, a bunch of different stuff like that. So there are fewer Jumbara head tasks now, um, which is great because I got tired of seeing entire boards <laughs> of Jumbara tasks. Um, so yeah, stuff like that is going to continue continue to happen, continue to up, upgrade, update, uh, tweak the, the system. Okay. Um, ooh, can we use our upgraded specs to create a guild? Okay, so... First of all, you can create a guild without any land, period. It's That's fine. Um, you can absolutely use your specs for with your guild, but we don't have anything in place um, if you're talking about like associating your spec to a guild. That's not planned. Also, specs, um, the tiered resources, the high tiered resources are only going to be available on NFT lands and then those discoverable contestable lands like in the future um so i guess the answer is kind of no for now but i would say you can always just use it as a meeting place like if that's a place you guys want to go hang out absolutely go do that everyone yeah. can go to your deck so i think when we think about the long term we're going to start with a focus on the nft land and then once we have that figured out with chapter two we'll probably focus on adding in a guild aspect to specs as well, because it, it makes sense to have like some of the upgraded specs be a part of guilds as well too. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll basically kind of like ease into it. Right. Okay. I don't like this one. Don't give him loaves. Don't do no, it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> oh man. Um, oh, Okay. Can't deliver my macchiato to Heidi. <laughs> what? Okay, I'll just, I'll just, let me just, let me just, let me just deal with this quickly. Uh, reach out to support. Um, what the fuck? Said, reach out to support. What are devs doing? Are people aping in your guilds. That was going on. Yeah, you degens. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No, I'm, I'm okay. Really Start selling is out now because now guilds are actually behaving how they oh, should. Oh, it changed. Um, yeah. Defeat mo Again, robots. Apologies for making that take so long. Um, because yeah, there was like. Yeah, just being transparent. That took way longer than it should to get out the guild shard selling, and that should have come out much sooner. Um, now they're like probably priced the way that they should be, right? There's not just like one side of like buy pressure, no sell pressure. Um, yeah, appreciate the patience with that. Yeah. Okay, and then to finish off here, want our sweatshirts, maybe a tank top or something. Yeah. So people ask us about merch all the time. We'll see. Um, we have What's a pretty up, bang, cool t-shirt that doing, we made for Morning. GDC. I would love to sell that. Just like get it in the hands of our users as well. So we'll see. It's not going to be in the immediate like next couple weeks. I'll I'll say that. But it's definitely something I'm, we're thinking about. Um, and I asked on the last AMA and I'll ask again. The thing with merch is it's very expensive. And I also... I'm personally in favor of creating high quality items that people are actually Fuck going it. to If you can't pay it, you're like a poor part immediately and end up and in that's where you'll stay very quickly. However, that makes nah, them kidding. expensive. So 
what would you guys prefer? Would you prefer a higher quality item at a higher price point? High quality, high lower quality high price point, lower price point. That's more accessible. For no, 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 high quality, high quality, high quality, high quality side, um, higher quality, but high quality, high quality, no bullshit, no bullshit, no bullshit, no bullshit. Yeah, somebody said they were scared of shard selling, but it went a lot smoother than expected. Not many people sold like I was afraid of. Yeah, I mean, so. Again, guilds true colors came out yesterday, right? And now you can kind of get a better feel of like who the best guilds to join are. Um, and it helps inform some of your decision making around that too, right? So there are a lot of really great guilds inside of the game that are just groups of players that um, like love playing pixels together. And yeah, if you're interested in joining a guild, I would try to join one of those ones, right? Okay. And then let's end on this note. This is a, this is a fun one. Oh, <laughs> no, you don't even know. I, I like asked for that so many times. So you're welcome. Um, but also it was definitely needed. And and yeah, and someone said create a guild for us girlies. So there is actually a girls uh, only. I would prefer like stream souls. low quality. Souls. I've never said it out loud. There you go. Sheik souls. So yeah, you can go check that one out. And yeah, we can wrap it up here. So thank you all for all your questions. And we will see you in our half- English half Espanol Twitter space on Tuesday. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Thanks for nothing. I'm just kidding. Okay. What do you guys think about the AMA? Nah, I ripped your ears, guys. My bad. I didn't mean to do that. I'm speaking both Spanish and English. I like that they changed the system to robots. How the fuck did I die? What? Huh? Wait a second, what? I didn't even notice I was low health.
guys ready? We're about to unleash the machine gun! There we go! Oh wait, we, I don't have the machine gun. I thought I had it for some reason, I don't know. Yeah, I like this song. Higher, higher, higher. So if you want something to hold on to, gotta find it first. But here I am. Cause I've been laying under palm trees, waiting for the summer. No, and there's nowhere to go. Cause I am happy. I wanna take it on it, I'm falling. The cityscape by night, wanna catch my photos. Where you go, every corner twice as bright. There'll be my treasures forever. When I can't hold you tight, I'll see the Stockholm lights. The Stockholm lights, the Stockholm lights. Tomorrow feels a year away Like the seconds, the beginning and the end uh -huh. But if in time it's yesterday Your picture's gonna bring it home to me again The world is waiting up The world is waiting half a step beyond our door uh -huh. And if it's not enough I wanna see the stuff the world has got in store I wanna take it on it, I'm falling The cityscape by night, wanna catch my photos Where you go, every corner twice as bright There'll be my treasures forever When I can't hold you tight, I'll see the Stockholm lights The Stockholm lights, the Stockholm lights on the track on my face. 
I didn't get the Yoku, man. <sighs> I need to get to level 15, bro. Wait, what the fuck just hit me? Like, honestly. What? Huh?
All right, guys, let me take a piss.
How many coins? We'll see, we'll see.
I'm not taking any questions at this moment. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for thank you guys for all the questions. I'm not taking any questions at this moment. Today was a tough day. Huge. It's all rigged. Huge. I'm not taking any questions at this moment. Make gaming great again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hit on the girl right here. Like, click on her. It'll probably reactivate the quest. Just say, I want to access my bank account. Don't do the quest, just skip the quest. This one. In the counter. She's not there. You get a hard, re hard refresh, hard refresh, like F5, control F5, or some shit like that. There's nobody behind. Log out and log back in. What's up, Adele?
<laughs> the lady went on vacation. It didn't happen to me, though. Let me see what I'm gonna craft. Up, I don't want to talk to you. Five damage. I can probably do this one. Sun metal. Neuron. Sun metal. How do we, how do you create sun metal? Let's Aluminum and copper. We can do it. Let's keep accumulating. And put this back. Hello? I stole that shit. I stole it. Who did I steal it from? Drop it. <laughs> Somebody else grabbed it.
Oh shit, my stomach. Come on, let me get the Joku from the... The game should give you the Joku that you... From the kills that you get. Like, after... After the dungeon is over, you should... They should drop the Joku. Bro, give me the Jaku! That shit's pissing me off, bro.
from the tile. And I'm hating the slack, couple miles further round like the hate in the gaff. Please stop talking that trash, cause the vibes in the fun all the way to the back. Try to believe in anything greater than a miracle. It wouldn't be this difficult if we we try to be a negative fool. Yeah, we could be taking control. Yeah, if we try to believe in anything greater than a miracle, it wouldn't be this difficult if we we try to be a negative fool. Yeah, we could be taking control. I'm so mad with the Joku thing. I should be at level 15 by the boss. Why is that hitting me, bro? What? Okay, dude. This is so fucking annoying right now. Nah, 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 it's not the machine gun, it's a Joku! I'm literally killing enough bots, I'm literally killing enough bots to get fifth level 15 Joku, right, with Joku, and I'm not getting the fucking Joku when I kill the, the bots. 
When the level is over, the Joku disappears. That makes no sense. You don't understand. You, don't, you guys don't understand what I'm saying. You guys don't play this game. None of you play this game. I was at level 15. I was level 14. What are you talking about? Don't make me go back into the stream. You watch the VOD. I know what I'm saying. I was level 14. That was, I was complaining about being level 14 before I even went into the, the boss. No, you didn't, bro. There's no way you did. No fucking way. No way. I'm gonna prove you wrong. There's no fucking way. You are lying. There's no. Right here. Right here. Why are you lying? Why are you lying? You haven't checked shit. What is that? What does that say here there? What does that say there? Level 14. Right? Level 14. Right there. 14. So no. I'm not on luck. This is glitch. It's, it looks like it's all luck, but it's at level 15. Yeah, but that's a bug. No, it wasn't. It says 14. How are you going to say? I was level 14. The game right now is punishing you. Okay, here's what's happening. Right now, the game is giving you punishment... Look, I have 53, right? Up here, right? 53. If I group up 50... If I put 50 bots together and I kill them all together, I lose a Joku. That makes no sense. And that's what's happening. If I group it together right now, if I put 50 together or 40 together, I lose all of it. That makes no sense. It should at least give me the 42 that I have. So I'm not getting to the boss 
with level 15 like I should be. So I have to kill one by one. Look, you want to see? Check this out. Boom, okay. I, I killed the group. Check this out. If I group, if I group all of these together, I'm not gonna get the Joker. Check this out. This is gonna happen. Gonna, I'm not gonna get all of them. It's just gonna disappear. Dumb. Right? Boom. I got a little bit there, but still, I'm not getting the Joku. So it's not. Not okay. Usually, if you get if you maximize Joku in level one, you get si level six and a half. As a matter of fact, I can show you here. If I go to the first level here, I maximize, and I got level six and a half here. When I went into level two, you can see. You see. You see. Six and three fourth. You see that? That's maximizing Joku right there. That's the problem right now. And right now I'm going into le into level two with six, barely six. It's wrong. Fix your game. I'm just gonna put the machine gun automatic, right? Not gonna get enough. Oh, cool. It's pretty simple to fix actually. Like like on paper it's pretty simple to fix. I don't know if uh, it's pretty simple to fix, right? Like it's just basically if you kill a bunch of if I have if I kill the the remainder of the robots that um that I need to go to the next level, if I kill them then the Joku should drop. It should drop all the Joku of the remainder, right? Like, it's very simple. I'm here trying to rush, get the Joku, so I don't, you know, look at that. Like, I can't even finish the game and get the Joku.
straight to the bar. Yeah. Yo, by the way, what's up, B Porter? I saw you, you came in. To have you have you been part of uh, World Wide Web, or did you do it after you saw the stream? I know you're pretty big on uh, on pixels, so you, did you go big on on World Wide Web, or was it beforehand? Not even like I am playing good right now. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of annoyed, kind of stressful. I am I'm getting punished. All these bots together. My strategy is to get the health by level three. Ah, right. That's my personal. Not work. Kind of like this courage trick. I'm gonna I'm about to die in fucking level I didn't get fucking health but What really bothers me is that randomly turns on click to move. Yeah, that's something you should report it. Oh, we have reported already. They're, they're probably going to put all these patches and patch it all together.
You can't get past level three. Oh, you get it's easy. What 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 do you what do you have right now? L let me see your thing. C come to the come to the energy room. Come to the tire soul. Yeah, yeah. You need to craft. You need to craft. 8 health, 12 damage. Yeah, you just gotta, cra you gotta craft better stuff. You're gonna struggle with this. Let me see if I got something for you. your stats yeah you need to okay i got it yeah yeah just do level one and two for now you'll be fine eventually you you'll be able to check it out for now see you guys tomorrow all right eric much love man have a good night bro how did i get my heal ability um it, i think it dropped in the in the dungeon if i'm not mistaken Hey, yo, guys, I'm out of energy um, in this game and in pixels. I think I'm going to call it early today. I want to rest, to be honest. And I have a meeting later. So, yeah, I'm going to call it here. Tomorrow, we'll, we'll just harder. So, much love, guys. Thank you, everybody, that came through today. I appreciate it. Make sure you guys like. Make sure you guys comment. Make sure you guys subscribe. And make sure you guys go to the juices.io and subscribe to our newsletter, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very soon, we're going to go through a new revamp. It's going to look much cleaner, much better. Um, if you guys want to stay up to date with everything Web3 Gaming News right here, this is their spot, baby. Right here. Bam. Now, we just uploaded a brand new video on World Wide Web. If you do like World Wide Web, Make sure you guys watch that video or like it or comment. It really helps the channel grow um, right here. Yesterday night, late night, we were playing. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you. What's his name? Um, his name is... Um, what is his name here in the, in, the, in the stream? Fuck. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. We played with bang, bang yesterday night. And you guys can watch that run if you guys care. Um, but yeah, go like it so people can find this game. Please go comment on it. Bam, bam, bing, boom, bing, 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 bam. I'm going to leave it right here. Boom. All right. Sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, bye-bye. Have a good night. Have a good morning wherever you are. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with more juice. I think I might go get a massage like at the at the beach or something. It's cheap. Uh, like I have this like slept like shit and I have this like thing here. It hurts. Oh. Alright, have a good night. Bye bye.